Right, okay, ladies and gents, here's a, another quick Lightroom, quick and dirty Lightroom tutorial. This one's going to be black and white conversion, or at least my way of black and white converting, because that's the point. There are many ways to skin these cats, and you can do this in all sorts of ways. This one was requested by Laura, so thank you, Laura. Hope you aren't too embarrassed now, I've pointed you out. Um, what can I say about black and white conversions to start with before we get into anything? Um, I personally like to shoot in black and white, so it's not often that I will convert. Um, because in my personal way of doing things, uh, a black and white image starts out as a black and white image, and I would normally photograph with my camera um, set to black and white, even though I'm recording a raw image, so I can see how things are going. And why would I shoot in black and white? Um, I do a lot of shots in black and white when I'm doing portraiture, I think, Black and white lends itself really, really well to portraiture. Um, but also sometimes I'll, I'll do it for dramatic effect. And the picture I've got in front of you right now is the kind of thing that I would normally shoot in black and white. That's why I've picked on it. We got, um, as with the last color one, we got quite a high dynamic range to cope with here. And I've exposed again when I took the shot for the sky. Now, the sky is a really important part of this particular image because of the drama in it. And I know that when I convert that to black and white and pull some of that detail out, it's going to look even stronger. Now, one of the difficulties with um, doing that is we want the drama to be localized only really in the sky and not to be bleeding into the rest of the image. So I'll show you how to do that with um, a real top tip about how to use mask control, if I can remember how to do it, in Lightroom. Um, and then you'll see how we can very um, cleverly only make adjustments to the sky and not have it bleed in or to affect the, the, the mountain here. This is a shot, by the way, of Scotland, Glencoe. Some of you might recognize the particular peak. Right, so as I said, there are many ways to skin cats. And in this particular example, you could take it into something like Lightroom and use the, uh, I think it's a channel mixer, mixer tool. You can just desaturate um, like this, um, which is a little bit, I won't call it sloppy, even though I've now used that word. It it, it does it does a job. Um, but the way I like to do things, oh, hold on, I should go back half a step. When we talk about the channel mixer, it is often portrayed in instructional videos as being the proper way to do it. Okay. Now I will just throw in a personal opinion on that. Um, it's a bit like what camera you've used or what lens you've used, lens you've used. When the end result is shown, can anybody tell? And I think the likelihood is very unlikely that somebody could say, ah, that wasn't done in channel mixer, you've not done a proper job on it, okay? The overall end effect of an image is what is most important. So how you get there is kind of irrelevant. There's no posh or proper way to do it. There's no way the pros do it compared to the way that the amateur does it. Forget pro and amateur, it's nonsense. I know some incredible amateurs I know some really mediocre professionals. It means nothing. So let's get that away straight away. So all I do in most cases, well, there's two things I do. I actually have presets um, because I um, got fed up with doing the full conversion every time. So I've got two, and if I just hover over them, there's a very dark, strong vignette one, which I normally use for portraits. And there's just a basic one, um, but they're called black and white strong. Okay, two versions. That's what I normally do, but that's only because I've done so many and over the years I've set those up. So if you um, right click on them, I think, and apply an import, rename, update recurrent settings. Da -da. I won't do it because I may mess it up, but you can actually open the dialog box which shows you the actual adjustments I've made over here and then saved for it to be the preset over here. And you can chop and change that and that's how you make them. Maybe a different video on how to set up a preset is actually quite easy. You just um, you just hit add a preset over here and then save the settings that you've used. But we're not doing that right now. Let's get rid of that. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to go to the black and white in the top panel, first panel, black and white, click it, and it immediately converts me to black and white. All right, it is as simple as that. And now I can work on the image. Why have I done that? Because then when I come down into the, um, the what should be the color panel, which has now been renamed to black and white, I can just play with the various color channels anyway. All right, so if I, I'm just gonna fiddle a few, around a few, you know, I can start already to create 
my look. Okay, if I drop the blues, look, we get a, a darker sky, almost like I've used a polarizer. And we can do, if the color's in the image, you can, and which most colors should be, you can play with them. All right, and then you can adjust that. That's the first thing I'd always do. Play with those, because for example, down here in this rubbly, gravelly area at the bottom, if I just play with orange, it's almost like I'm dodging and burning, right? I'm, I'm, I'm lifting that, like I'm burning it up a bit. So you can do that, and you're mixing with the colors and the channels, and you can do an auto, see what that does. Mm, I don't really like it, it's still too dark down here. But that's the sort of thing I would normally do. I would I would play with it in that way. I like my greens up, I'll restore what I did, because I really want this bright area of greens to be prominent in this, this image. Look, push that out. Um, I'm not going to do a top job on this, as I always say, I'm just going to play about with it to show you how I do it. But anyway, so click black and white, then come to the black and white panel, which used to be the HSL colour, and we can play with our different colour channels, all right? Any way we want, and just play to taste. It's that simple. So there's no real um, uh, magic there. You can use this little dot here if you're not familiar with it. Um, and if you click it, you then obtain it, and you can see it's now on my cursor. And then if you hold it over any particular what was color within the image or area of now tonal change within the image, you will only affect, you see if you look over here, as I do it, you can see it's highlighting which color I'm hovering over or was a color. And in most cases it's red. Can you see them? If you watch this over here, you'll see them change and flash. Yep, and if I come up here, blue will probably light up somewhere. There you go, blue. Come down here, it's green and or yellow. And you can actually say I'm doing the blue. Let's come up to blue again. Where was there a bit of blue there? And I click and hold and I drag up or down. You see how the slider is automatically over there on the right changing. So I can just do it in the image rather than hop over to the right there and, and play with the slider. So I've got the two ways of doing that. But I'm just going to push that back out because it will help me do the next bit. And then I just click on there to replace it. Now here's the bit. Here's the little top tip. Here's the little bit of magic if there is any. When we go into the brush tool. And let's say I'm going to dr dramatize my sky, make it more dramatic. Um, I can, of course, just pick a brush. All right. I can set my um, reset the effects. I can set, say, my exposure down and then I can uh, brush in the, the sky. Yeah, I can brush in a more dramatic. There you go. Look, I can brush in a more dramatic sky. OK, now. What I want to be careful about is when I get down to the near the mountain, I want to brush in this sky to give it this drama. Let's just give it some clarity as well. Just let's just kick the absolute backside out of it just to, for effect. Be careful with that, guys. You go too far on that, and it starts to look really horrible like this. And I see this in personally in way too many black and white photos where they go too crazy over with skies, and it looks this muddy. Some people like it, but if you're looking to progress in mainstream landscape photography and you want to be in that realm of not going too abstract and being you know kind of more accepted more acknowledged as trying to develop images that are quite realistic and you know as they were you might not want to do something like that okay i could do that i could chuck the dehaze and people go wow look at that that looks crazy but it also looks unnatural just my opinion on that but anyway a little bit of uh, clarity in there is okay but as i was getting to what i don't want to do um is I don't I want to delete that because that's from old times. I don't want to encroach onto my mountain because this darkening effect that I'm giving it will also affect the mountain. I don't want that, right? I want it just to be on the mountain. So if I can remember how to do this, yes, I think I can. You see in the middle of the my brush tool, if I put it somewhere dark here, I've got this cross, this crosshair in the middle, bang in the middle, yeah? You see that? Now, if I hold down Command on my keyboard and keep it held, and I continue on, my keyboard's not connected, there you go, and I continue to paint, as long as I keep that little white crosshair off of the mountain and only in the sky, it will auto-mask. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hit O so I show my mask, so the red area is where I've already been. Um, so I'm going to hold down Command and I'm going to continue to paint, but you will notice, look at that, as long as I keep that white crosshair in the sky, it only affects the area in which the white crosshair or the, the part of the, let's say, the red right side, the red, red in this case, side of the mask. See that? It's only doing the sky. 
So now I've got that applied, let me just press O again to take that red mask off. And I play with that, it only affects the sky. Got it? That's the best tip. That also applies to if you're doing a color edit, by the way, it's not just for black and white, but it just occurred to me in this image, it would be a good place to do that. And the same applies if I go to new and I'm just brushing in uh, again, exposure, let's say on, on the mountain. Let's just make sure I've got that running right. Is that working? Yeah, there you go. Maybe I should put some more on to really emphasize it. So if I'm doing the same thing here, yeah, I'm going to hit O so I see my mask. I'm on a Mac. If you're not on a Mac, I don't know what it is. If it's O or if it's Command, you'll just figure that out, okay? Sometimes it's just a matter of playing. You can also always reset it. But the same should apply here as long as I keep the white crosshair only on the mountain. There is a little bit of bleed there I'm noticing. Maybe I've mucked that up somehow. But you get a similar thing, all right? I've not done it very well. I've done it a bit rough and ready, but you get the you get the idea. So again, as I play with that, I'm only really affecting the part of the image that I want to affect. And then I can take it down to, I mean, this is rough and ready. I really don't actually like this edit. Um, I would tend to do this a lot different. I would certainly put in more um, texture into the mountain. I'd probably, I might even in this particular case, crop that. I don't like this bottom bit really. Um, I might take it to a square one by one image. Um, something like that um, and work on it from there again it's just a play image it's nothing I'm proud of but if you go to um, Y on your keyboard and you can see the before and after you can see the conversion and how we've brought more out of that sky for the effect of drama all right so yeah black and white conversions are pretty simple really I don't do a great deal to it I normally try and shoot it in the first place in black and white but if I have to or need to I just follow those simple steps. And by the way, that masking thing I showed you, you can do that with a portrait as well. You can mask around the person's head so you could brighten them or darken them or, or, or the background and so on. All right, just flip it, just invert it. All right, so I hope that helped and it satisfied the requirements of those asking for it. So um, any other requests, guys, let me know what you might wanna see. I always try and do things simply and easily. Um, the quickest route to a result is the best way really. It gives us more time to be taking photos rather than um, just editing them. Um, or, as I've said, as far as black and white is concerned, shoot it in the first place. Learn to see in black and white. That's not a, a, a literal comment, but learn to try and imagine what something would look in black and white, and then that will help you decide if you should shoot it like that in the first place. You don't necessarily need to go out and say, I'm gonna shoot in black and white today. If you see in black and white, you will see, as I've already covered, if I hit Y again, that, oh, that sky will look really dramatic in black and white because just of the way it is, um, all right? The, the, the tonal um, uh, tonal range of it from the bright whites to the really darker bits of cloud, the gray and the blue, just tells you that when it goes to black and white, it could be pulled out It's quite dramatic like this. All right, so I don't know how long that was. Hopefully it wasn't too long. Um, take care, everybody. Stay safe. Don't go outside and get any bugs unless you really have to. And um, catch you later.